We're now going to talk about going concerns. Now, going concerns from an exam perspective is something that occasionally pops up for a mark or two. I don't often see some of the more complicated stuff here. I will talk about the complicated stuff, and they are quite complicated. You need to get your head around it, but it's not often asked in that way. Okay, so first up, a going concern. So what are we talking about here? A going concern is if you have a business that is obviously a working business, that's a going concern. Now, what we are looking at here is a situation where one person sells a business to another person. It's not selling the shares, it's selling the actual business. If you sell the shares, it's a financial service. Okay, now, how it works is as follows. Section 8 to 7, section 8 is the deemed supply section, says, when you sell a going concern, although it's a business that you're selling, you must be treating, you must treat it as if it's a sale of goods. In other words, again, remember, section 7.1a says, there must be output tax if there is a supply of goods by a vendor in an enterprise. Basically, what you'll see that section 8, 7 tells us is that you must treat it as if it's a supply of goods in your enterprise. Right, and if you are a vendor, you obviously will be, then it means there must be output tax. So you have to calculate output tax when you sell your business to someone else. Section 11, 1E though says that that output tax can be calculated on 0%. So it can be zero rated if, and this is all in section 11E, if all the requirements are met, be aware of them. If it is a going concern which is capable of separate operations, so when I'm selling you the business, it must be a proper business that can operate it on its own. Right, I can't, if I'm Coca-Cola, and we make bottles of Coke, and there's one machine that puts the lid on the machine, on the Coke, I can't sell you just that machine and say, now you've got a proper business, because you can't, you don't have the rest of the things to make Coke. Right, so you must have the full business. The seller, both the buyer and the um, seller agree in writing that it's a going concern. So that's a, there's legal documentation. They must agree in writing that it'll be an income earning activity. So the seller, the buyer needs to say, yes, I'm going to continue with this business. All of the assets necessary to carry on the business are sold. So I can't just say to you, I'm selling you the concept, you must go and buy everything yourself. I'm going to sell you the proper business. And we must agree in writing that it is zero rated. Now guys, you can go and read into position note 57. I strongly suggest you do. It tells you all about going concern. Read it in addition to what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here is section 111E, the section we just talked about. Just to quickly show you where it tells you that it can be zero rated. This says, the supplier is to a registered vendor, so it must be a vendor, of an enterprise or a part of an enterprise which is capable of separate operation where the supplier and the recipient have agreed in writing that is a going concern. Provided that such enterprise shall not be disposed of unless the, the supplier, so the, the seller and the buyer, have at the time of conclusion of the agreement agreed in writing that it will be an income earning activity. The assets which are necessary for carrying on such an enterprise is disposed of. They have agreed in writing that it will be at a tax rate of 0%. So guys, all of those rules that we discussed there, you can see it there. Now, important here. Two, where the enterprise, or part as the case may be, disposal as a going concern, has been carried on in on, or in relation to goods or services applied, mainly for purposes of such enterprise, or part as the case may be, and partly for other purposes. Such goods or services shall, where disposal to such recipient, for the purpose of this paragraph and section 18a, be deemed to form part of such enterprise, as the case may be, notwithstanding the provisions of paragraph V of enterprise. Okay, so what are they saying here? This is a super important paragraph. It says, let's say the business that I'm selling is this block of flats, well not a block of flats, a, block, a building, and this building is 70% commercial accommodation and 30% exempt. Now I sell this entire building to you. They say, if more, if it's mainly, mainly for purposes of the enterprise, mainly means more than 
50%. So they say, if it is more than 50% taxable, when you sell this building, right, let me actually give you as an example. They say, if, you, if it is more than 50% taxable, when you sell this building, the output tax, you can treat this whole thing as if it's taxable. So they say, a million times 0% times 100%. So the whole thing is your rated. Let me now explain to you what happens. If it's the other way around, so let's say commercial is 30% and exempt is 70%. So exempt is residential, obviously. Then, when we calculate the output tax, you will do the following. Output tax. On the taxable, so the commercial, and on the exempt, the residential, right? I want you to see what happens here. Usually when you sell a residential building, you'll just say it's no VAT. But because of this section, what happens is, if it is not mainly, right, and you'll see this also from the interpretation notes, then you'll say a million times 30%, so my taxable percentage, that will be zero rated. But the exempt portion, a million times 70%, that you will raise output tax on at 15%. The person who is buying it then can decide if they can claim that input VAT. So if they are that tax, if they are going to use it also for exempt purposes, they can't. But if they're going to use it for commercial purposes, they can. So that's why it's written in that way. Okay. Now, Section 18, capital A, is an adjustment for the buyer. So, the buyer. So, important here now. See this. If the buyer is going to use it for less than 100% for business, then the buyer must pay output tax. Right. So, here's a building, again. I sell it for a million rands. X VAT. X Limited sells to Y Limited. X Limited used 100% for taxable. Y Limited will use 60% taxable and 40% exempt. Right. X Limited will have output tax of 1 million rands times 0% times 100, right? Because it's zero rated. Y limited, first up, input tax. Can they claim input tax? What was the output tax raised? Null, so you can't claim any input tax. Y limited will then have to pay output tax in terms of section 18A as follows. The cost of the going concern times 15% times percent of exempt supplies. They're going to use it 40% for exempt supplies. So that amount will have to be paid as output tax. So guys, this is in its simplest form. So now, we're going to, I'm going to explain the different situations, and I've already touched on this now for you. So first, before we do anything, just a reminder here. Entertainment and motor cars. Input tax would have been denied when you buy them. If you now sell entertainment assets and motor cars as part of your going concern, so I sell you a business and part of it is the motor car that I had of it, there will not be output tax on those entertainment and motor cars. Same rule as we've seen previously. Right, so we look at the seller. This is the person that determines what we're going to be doing. You ask yourself, did the seller use that asset, that going concern, more than 50% as, uh, as taxable? So remember, you have taxable supplies and exempt supplies. If more than 50% was taxable, then you will treat that entire asset as if it's a sale of a going concern. I'm going to remind you, I did this example over here, where I said, where I started off and I said, commercial, which is taxable, was 70%, and exempt was 30%. I said, if it's more than 50%, then this output tax over here is calculated... On the 100%, that's actually what we did here. Right. So you take the full thing as being zero rated. That is what it says here. 
If you use it less than 50% as a going concern, then only the taxable portion is zeroated and the rest is treated as a self and normal self asset, i.e. 15% VAT. So what is this now? This is my example again. I'll go back up. We are set, okay. Assume that the commercial is 30% and the exempt is 70%. Right. What do you do then? You calculate the output tax as follows. On the commercial, that's 30%. You will charge 0%, and on that 70%, you will charge 15%. Right, so this is just a summary of the steps, and you'll see that then also in all of your examples. So if more than 50% is taxable, the seller, output tax is levied at 100% on the sale of the going concern, so that's 100% of the amount. Then, this is the normal rule that applies. If originally you didn't claim 100% of the input tax and now you're selling it, you can claim additional amounts under Section 163H. Same rule still applies that we saw under Section 163H. If you don't know what Section 163H is, guys, you must go back and study that section separately. You must know it. The buyer can claim the input tax which has been raised, which is going to be null because it was zero rated. And then if the buyer is going to use at least 100% for taxable supplies, the buyer will apply and calculate output tax in terms of section 18A, which we discussed. Right? If you use it less than 50% for taxable, the seller will raise output tax at 0% on the taxable portion. And it will raise output tax at 15% on the portion which is not taxable. Then, again, same story. If you originally didn't claim 100% of the input tax, you can now claim 100% or the rest of the input tax under Section 163H. The buyer can claim the VAT that's on the invoice. So there is 0% VAT on the invoice and 15% VAT on the invoice. The buyer can claim it if they are going to use it for taxable purposes. And then the buyer must pay output tax under Section 18A if they're not going to use it 100% for taxable purposes.